next time. Hey guys, had some questions asking me about uh, what all did I pull out of this uh, panel here to uh, feed my sub panel. Um, how big is the feed going into your outback? You know, things of that nature. So I thought I'd try to answer all this uh, here. Um, so let's just start with the feed to the outback. And uh, I want to give you a little bit of information about the house because you're going to need to know this. Um, this house was built in the early 70s. So that equals out to a lot of circuits are piled on top of each other. And then one thing that the previous owner of the house said to me was he had an electrician come in, I think, in the early to mid-90s to, you know, basically try to bring it up a little closer to code. I guess they did some work on the kitchen and whatnot, and they separated out some circuits. They did some wire runs. Um, hence the hidden junction box four feet above this camera's head up in the ceiling that I found um, for a dishwasher circuit. So, and that's a that's another conversation in and of itself. Found those when I was actually bringing down three new circuits myself. Uh, me and my electrician buddy um, are gonna, you know, we're gonna separate out the microwave, the furnace, and the um, kitchen refrigerator. And about three or four feet above this here is a junction box, a metal junction box that we found buried in the wall with some. Um, 10, uh, I think 10.3 on it, which actually is a dishwasher and disposal feed. Um, should be 12.3, but uh, they ran 10. So, but the fact they junctioned it and they hid it in the wall, <laughs> great. So I basically just exposed it, left it in the box for now. It's, it's accessible. It's, uh, you can get to it. What I'm going to do with it, don't know yet. I'll get to that later. Um, I'll probably, I'm not going to rewire it. I'll, I'll probably just leave it accessible or I'll um, I'll put it into a box and put a blank on it so it is accessible. Um, but anyway, so moving right along. Um, this, when I pulled out my circuits, um, you know, basically you want to identify what you're going to run. Um, this is a 120 system. I'm not going to run, you know, any, any of these two, these two 40s. The top one is for the AC, the, uh, I'm sorry, the bottom one is for the AC here, and this is for the dryer, the 30 amp. Um, not going to be doing that. They stay here. Um, there is uh, a lot of lighting, of course, so these are not very heavy circuits. Uh, the heaviest circuits on here were the kitchens, you know, they were 20 amps, and the garage stuff here, uh, which is 20 amp as well, the rest is all 15. So, how did I pull it out? Well, you don't want to just rip it out of the box and, you know, junction it and bring it over. This is essentially a junction box. What, what I did was I ran the wire, uh, I pulled the wire out of the breaker, pulled the neutral out, pulled the ground out, you know, make sure your power is off before you do this. And what I did was I used 12 gauge because I had a, I had a 200 foot roll of it. I just used 12 gauge and I wire none them all together in the panel and I brought the feeds out through here. See these little smaller guys here? There's two 12 twos in each one of those. Um, so, and I ran them over to my little sub panel, which I'll show you. So they're all, you know, you have your hot, your neutral, your ground, you wire nut them in the panel, you know, nice and neat, you zip time. You know, this is kind of a small panel, so it's kind of tight in there as it is. Um, I wish it was a little bit longer, but it is what it is. Anyway, so you tie them together, you know, you wire nut them together, you zip time together nice and neat, away from all the bars, and you just bring them up and over, like I did. You just bring them up and over right into here. So, um, this is my sub panel, and they're fed right through here. So I've got, uh, you know, five of them coming in. So let me just take you through this sub panel here, and I'll um, get back to this other guy, and uh, we'll take you through that 40 amp feed. So these are the circuits I have pulled out of my house. I do not want eight circuits. <laughs> what I wanted from this is the bedrooms, um, three of the bedrooms in this house, all for lighting. And we're only talking and everything's LED, so we're only talking maybe, with ceiling fans and lights, maybe 200 watts, max. Um, I also wanted the bathrooms, you know, which is, you know, a light and the bathroom exhaust fan. Um, I also wanted the refrigerator in the kitchen, as well as the kitchen receptacles. Uh, or these, I'm sorry, the kitchen receptacles, yeah, just one of the two, you know, you have AB circuit, just the receptacle circuit. Well, what I found was, um, the kitchen receptacle was done in a 12.3. The uh, 
receptacle and the you know and the gas stove and whatnot all on a 12 3 so they share a neutral so you have to bring it over together so one and three right here i had to bring them over together i only wanted this one but i had to bring him up him because of a shared neutral okay fine this guy here is the plugs that are right down here you can't see them but they're right there um and they go along this wall here you know they go along this wall here and feed to the other side so that's the garage which i wanted that you know as well uh, this fourth one, that fourth 20 amp, is a dedicated freezer, which is behind me, a little chest freezer. That fifth one, that one's kind of a funny, um, that's a microwave circuit. <laughs> um, yeah, the, I don't know who did this, but someone tied into a 14 gauge wire with a piece of 12, uh, 12 2, you know, put in a receptacle <laughs> above, uh, above the range there, and, um, put it on a 20 amp breaker and um, when I saw that of course first thing I did was I ripped it down to a 15 amp breaker because it's tied into a piece of 14 gauge wire which is you know going to the panel um, that microwave is a microwave hood combo convection oven and that thing running on microwave pulls about 13 1400 watts and then also it's got an outside outlet tied to it as well so if you're out there running a leaf blower, you know, whatever, and uh, you so in terms of the microwave, that breaker's going to trip. So uh, he's one of the three that's going to get upgraded and separated out. Um, uh, plus that outside outlet, I really don't need that on there. Um, the sixth one, which you see with a little white button on it, that is an arc fault breaker. That's for the bedrooms, three of the four. Um, and it's also, no, no, that's not that one, it's the next one. The next one is kitchen overhead lights. Um, so technically there's three kitchen circuits, which is fine. Um, also it's tied to the bathroom circuits. <laughs> so that should be a 20. Um, but like I said, the house was built in the early 70s. So um, according to my friend the electrician, that should be two 20s. Um, if you have separate bathrooms, you should. So I don't think it's code. I think he said code was one dedicated 20. but. He says usually when he does a new house, you know, he'll ask the owner if they want them separated. And nine times out of ten, they say yes. So, just preference, I guess. But I think code is one dedicated twenty. But don't quote me on that. Um, if I ever could rewire it, I would do, you know, dedicated runs to it. But I've already punched the hole in the ceiling and I've already fixed it. So a little bit late for that. Uh, the eighth one is the lights you see in the garage. Um, which, for some strange reason, are tied to the family room or the, I'm sorry, the den, <laughs> which is where the big screen TV is. Um, which I guess that's good, you know, if uh, anything ever were to happen, I can at least have my big screen going. <laughs> so, um, yeah, not that I watch that much TV anymore anyway. But, uh, but yeah, it's just, you know, like I said, house is built in the 70s, that plug is there, and, you know, it's just, they tied it all together. Um, I guess I could take all the garage lights. You know, it isn't. It is a um, drywall. I could bust it open and rewire it. But uh, you know, maybe one day. But anyway, so that's the circuits I have now. Um, if you look at some of the stuff that's on here, it's it's not that much. Um, you know, on there, the wash machine is on there. He's a high efficiency Energy Star washing machine, so it doesn't take up that much. Actually, I did. Um, put it on a kilowatt hour meter and I think it took up I think the most amount of draw I saw was like 200 300 watts so it wasn't that bad um, uh, so it, it is doable you know like I said the dryer is a 240 he's not on this system but the main thing I was going for in this system was the refrigeration and the lights that was the main thing um, and uh, when I, and every single bedroom has a ceiling fan light combo so but that's the main thing I was going for um, I didn't really want to pull every single thing and I wanted some receptacles so you know you can plug in a cell phone or something like that you know or whatever so um, but that's that's pretty much the sub panel guys um, like I said it's wrong it's uh, you know there's a 40 amp feed to the outback and I'll take you over there real quick and I'll show you that so that 40 amp feed goes right up here on the top there goes in and then it hits this breaker here and all the wire inside this uh, this guy is THHN so this is the uh, on off that one on the far left to the uh, 
to the system here, to the AC side. I can actually bypass the inverter if I wanted to. So uh, down here are DC breakers. One is for the solar end, one for the charge controller, one for the batteries. And that's the main you know, on-off switch for the inverter itself. So um, let's see what we're doing. Not bad. Almost 1100 watts. So all the panels are sitting at uh, 38 degrees right now. Battery bank is full. So. That was another question that, uh, well, it wasn't a viewer who asked me, it was a friend of mine who asked me this question. He, um, he was curious about what would happen to your batteries if you just left them at 26.4 all the time, you know. I said, well, let's find out. I've already made this phone call before, but I, I thought I'd just go ahead and call again. I called up Concord, uh, the people who make the batteries that I have, um, and I have the 3050T 6 volt battery, and I asked the question, I said, what would happen if you know, I just kept them at 26.4 all the time. And he goes, well, let me ask you a couple questions. I said, go ahead. He said, um, are you um, exercising them down to, say, 80% state of charge and then going back to 26.4 and leaving? I said, no. I said, I'm absorbing them for about four hours at 28.4, and then, then I'll float them, and then they, they're done. He goes, as long as you're charging them back up fully, you know, after you use them, you got nothing to worry about. You know, and I asked him how long he's been doing this. He said 25 years. So um, I'm going to take him for his word because, like I said, he he works for the company that makes these things. So um, so his basic message was, if you're going to use them, you know, that's good. You know, just make sure you fully charge them back up. And he also threw in, you know, as you should every you know couple of months, drag them down. To about you know 60% state of charge. He goes, just drag them down, um, and 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 then charge them back up. He goes, it's good for them, you know. And I asked him how long would I get out of these batteries, you know, and he said it's kind of tough to tell, but um, he he estimated seven to ten years, you know, because I gave him a little bit of details about how you know how often I use them, you know, how many outages I've had. And he goes, based off that, seven to ten years, you know. And anything after that, anything after seven years, you're considered lucky. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know, that's just what they what they told me. So keeping them at 26.4 all day long, which is where they're at right now, it's not hurting anything. You're keeping them topped off, charged up. They're good. They're not being used. I mean, they go down to uh, you know because it's getting colder. They go from 26.4 to 25.2 overnight. I told them about that. 25.2 uh, is a fully charged battery bank with pretty much no load on it. Uh, there is like a 0 .03 amp draw on that overnight, which is the inverter running and whatnot. I gave him that information. He said, "That's that. Don't worry about that. That's nothing." Um, he goes, "That's normal with the cold." He goes, "What's the temperature?" I put my thermometer on. And he said, "About 65." He goes, "Yep, normal." And you're losing a little bit of capacity because it's getting cold. He um, asked what kind of box I had. I told him it's in a metal box. He goes, "Yep, metal radiates the cold." So. That's cooling them down, and he recommended a wooden insulated box. He goes, that'll help with that. So, and that's something we've talked about before. So, um, put them in a wooden insulated box. But uh, all in all, he said, just let them sit. 26.4 is fine. Uh, I did add some foam insulation to the side of it. Matter of fact, I'll show you. It's kind of hokey, but whatever. Um, I added some right here. Let me show you this here. Right there, um, and you can see there's a vent right down here. You know, it's a vent for the garage. Um, what I did was I just got some foam from uh, Home Depot and just put it on the side of it. You know, these are sealed batteries. They don't really need a vent. Plus, the other side I didn't block up. And I put a piece in the back because the way the air travels. Uh, I did that a couple of days ago. And I, um, you know, before I did it, I, I checked to see, you know, what the voltages were at certain times because the temperature is pretty, pretty much the same this time of year. Um, and it did help. They it took a little bit longer, like three or four hours longer, to get the 25.2 than uh, it normally did. So, and the temperature showed that. So that that's a good thing. But I do want to build a wooden box. But one thing I want to do though, if I build a wooden box, I want to build it, you know, about double the depth because I want to put eight eight batteries in the bottom so I can have enough room for eight more on top. So I do want to expand the system. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. But other than that, guys, that's it. Uh, I know it's kind of long, um, kind of long video here, but 
that's how I did it, you know. That's how I pulled out the circuits and uh, where I pulled them to, whatnot, etc. Um, any questions, I'll answer as best I can. Um, there is uh, check out OBXO Wind. He's got a lot of great videos about this stuff. Um, matter of fact, he's one of the people I, I learn from uh, by watching his vids. A lot of good information on his channel, and I mean a lot of it. Um, um, so I would definitely recommend his channel. Um, also, uh, Chris DIY in Oklahoma. He's got a pretty good system going there too. Hey, Chris. So, um, uh, so there's another guy, Kenny. Uh, Kenny. Uh, I can't remember his YouTube name. Maybe you'll see it on Chris's. Um, he's there too. Good stuff, guys. Really good stuff. Um, me and one way is to do this, but I'm gonna say this, and you know, not giving you a safety lecture, but before you play with this stuff, okay, you know, maybe consult an electrician, have him come out, which you know, tell him what you want to do, whatever. Nine times out of ten, they won't charge for that, whatever. But be careful with this stuff, you know, especially the DC side. DC doesn't tickle like AC. You know, I've been lucky. You know, knock on wood there. Um, I haven't been hit by DC, and I'm going to keep it that way. So, uh, so take precautions. Be careful. Um, but anyway, that's about it. I'll um, keep you guys updated on that strut rack, and if I get those two extra panels, uh, you're going to be seeing a video of me building another one. Um, and that's about it. So you guys take care, and I'll see you.